Thanks. Thanks for checking out socialscienceskills.com and this YouTube channel. I'm super excited to have you here and cover the topic of ID numbers. ID numbers are pretty simple, but an essential element throughout the um, data collection, cleaning, and analysis process. Da ID numbers allow you to track your respondents, um, especially if you have multiple data sources or co are collecting data over time. And they are essential in the data cleaning and analysis for keeping your data straight and making sure there aren't any errors. Today, I'm going to show you how to program ID numbers to automatically populate every time that someone takes your survey. Um, it's pretty easy, but it's it took me a while to figure this out, so I'm excited to share this tip with you today. Um, the elements that are involved in this process are going back to the survey flow, which I've introduced you to before. Um, I'm going to introduce to you today the concept of embedded data and piped text, also a way that it's referred to. Um, and then lastly, if you just have a small data set and want to enter ID numbers by hand, or if you've already collected some data and need to go back and enter ID numbers after you've programmed this in, I'll show you how to do that on the data and analysis screen. So join me on Qualtrics. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm back on this survey that we've been working on um, throughout these videos, and I, um, it's still very simple, just a one question screener and then one question in the body of the survey. So today we don't actually need to do anything on this page. We're just going to go straight to the survey flow. So click on that survey flow. And we're going to add another element here like we did when we did the branch screener. I'm going to add it below the eligibility screener for now, but we might move it around later. So click add below and then embedded data. This is where you type in the name of the variable that is your ID number. So I always call this ID num, but you could call it participant ID or just ID, um, anything you'd like. You can click away to set that. And then we're going to, we're not gonna set the value, it won't come from a URL. We're going to choose how, what we want this value to be. So the simplest way to do this and get some different values is to use a um, random number. This isn't guaranteed to give you a unique ID for every individual, but if you set it to a big enough range, then the likelihood that you'll get a repeat is um, less likely. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with integers and I don't know how many people are going to be taking this survey, but I think I want four digits to populate. So I'm going to, and I want them all to be four digits. So I'm going to start with 1000 and end with um, 9999. So it'll be a four digit number in between there or inclusive of those values, but it'll be four digits. So I'm going to click insert and we get some code populating this field that will um, create a random number for us. One way to increase the likelihood that all of these numbers will be unique is to use values from your survey. So I'm going to insert more piped text, you can just keep on adding to this string and the numbers will appear side by side in this value. And um, this is going to go after the screener, so we can um, only use screener questions. So a lot of times what's common is to use, um, like if you had a 
a survey that was going to be taken by people in many countries or states or counties. You could have a geographic code for those um, values and then the ID number, for just from looking at the ID number, you'd be able to determine where this person was from or what group they're in or um, when they enrolled. If you have enrolling enrollment, you can add codes for all of those things. But we only are asking about people's age, so we're going to use that question. I'm going to use selected choices recode. Um, I think selected choices would work fine, but this will be the values that you assign to those um, choices. So uh, if you remember, we didn't ask people to enter their age or choose their age from a drop down of many, many years. We have categories, so this will enter into our ID number the value that we've assigned to correspond with the category that they've selected. So click that and it adds to our string. Um, if you'd prefer for the age to go before the random number, you can just highlight and move the text around. Um, and there are many other options of, of things that you could include in this um, location. Um, you could, even if you aren't asking people what, um, where they live, this can, this pulls information from their IP address. So you could include the country where they are there. But this is enough for now. So like always, when we're working in the survey flow, we're going to save before we leave. Now this won't actually change the way the survey appears to your participants. Um, but I'm going to publish and generate some ID numbers so I can show you what they look like in the data. Okay, I'm back. I ran through the survey a couple times to create some ID numbers for us to um, check out, make sure they work, and um, then I'll show you how to um, edit ID numbers in the data, on the data page um, for those ones that we weren't able to collect ID numbers before. So click on data and analysis. And if you're just looking here, you won't see the ID numbers. We have to select um, which columns we can view on this page. So um, choose columns and embedded data ID number. So as you can see, we've screened out um, some people who didn't meet our eligibility criteria that we discussed in the last video, which um, were is people younger than 18. Um, so that's why some of these are blank. And you can kind of check that visually by looking at the ID numbers. Remember this first digit corresponds to the category um, that corresponds with their age. So the one means that it's from our youngest group and we don't have any data from them, which makes sense. And the five indicates that um, it's from our oldest group and we do have data from them, so that's good. You could also use this as you're collecting data. If you wanna screen people who, if you wanna only look at the data and analyze it from people who are eligible, for instance, or if you do add more specific data, like about um, where they live or things like that, it's a it's a neat neat thing to have the ability to use. That's how ID numbers can be helpful as you are cleaning and analyzing data. One of the ways. Um, so you'll see that these were the responses that I just filled in today after we added the ID number programming. But before that, we didn't have the ID number programmed in, so we're going to have to add this.
To add this in, click on Edit up here in the upper right. And you'll see these um, blue plus signs where you could go back and edit this data um, or add responses if someone contacted you outside the survey and said that they really needed to change their response. Um, this is a little dangerous, so be careful that you're not editing data that you shouldn't be. Um, I'd recommend it um, more for administrative things like if this is where you're tracking people's contact information or um, if or ID number like we're doing right now. So I'm going to leave question one's responses alone, but editing these values is as simple as um, typing in here. So for these, um, I'm not going to look up the age. We could add that. We could edit that later. I'm just going to use a zero um, to code that these are people that responded before we had the ID number programmed in. And then you could add a random number, but I think I'll just do sequential for now because that's easiest. Um, so 01001. Zero, one, oh, oh, one. Zero, one, oh, oh, two. So you can just keep filling them in like that until you have all that you need. Um, also, if you just have a really simple data set that you've already collected but want to make sure you include ID numbers before you start data cleaning and analysis, um, you could just add a new column and enter the ID numbers in on this page as well. And now you know how to program ID numbers into your Qualtrics survey. Thanks so much for joining me today as we learned about this and um, uh, got some new skills to use in Qualtrics. Um, I'd love to hear if you have other questions about how to incorporate ID numbers or how to use embedded data. Um, I, there's, I have a lot more to share with you on these topics, and so if you have specific questions, I would be super happy to address them. If you're not already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me over on Instagram. Those things will make sure that you um, don't miss a video. So, uh, again, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.